Hey, y'all, Kara Keller's coming to the stage this morning. Hey, so listen, we don't usually have three microphones up here, so we're going to give our media team all the grace in the world. Can you say all the grace? All the grace. As they figure out what in the world we are going to do with the volume of these microphones, they might squeak a little bit. Just going to keep you on your toes. Okay? Sound (laughs) good? Keep it exciting, right? (laughs) Yeah. Keep life spicy. Hey, so um, I I feel like we can't not say... Thank you. Yeah. You know? Um, Man, see, I was going to say nothing because I know I'm just going to cry like a baby. that's the issue. And I I don't want to take up all the time. Yeah, I'm going to cry my tears into my coffee, you know? (laughs) Um, But but thank you, guys. It's it's an honor to pastor here. Mm -hmm. And it's so cool to... um, Someone was asking me the other day. I was doing like a little interview thing, and they were asking about my part in the church. And it's just so cool that I get to serve in the place where I met Jesus. Mm. And I just want to thank y'all for being a part of that. And it's a unique thing to, to step into the pastorate at a place where you did that. And, and so I just thank y'all for grace and for mercy and also trust. You know, I know it's been a trip. I mean, good night. It has been a trip, huh? And, but here we are, and God's doing powerful things, and that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. So yeah. these, these love stories, uh, first of all, we're going to be calling people up, but God gets all the glory. Can you say all the glory? For sure. All the glory. So, so thank you for appreciating us as your pastors. God gets all the glory. We appreciate you. God gets all the glory, and every story that's going to be shared up here today he gets all the glory. Amen? Amen. Sound good? Yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, who do we have first? We get to speak with Grace Wiltsman first. Come on. <laughs> let's show Grace some love as she comes on up here. <laughs> Grace is serving in kids today. Yeah. yeah. But we stole her. We're like, yeah. can you just come for just a little bit? <laughs> We'll fill, it. we'll fill the spot. <laughs> I mean, shout, shout out to Hannah, who's covering yeah. for me right now while I do this. Come on, that's, Hannah. That's yeah, Hannah. Solid. I don't know if she can hear me back there, but just know in the spirit. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, Grace, I'm going to ask you to hold this mic up close to your face, okay? Hello. Hi, there she is. <laughs> awesome. Beautiful. So, Grace, you know, we, when we started this love story thing, this is really a fancy way of saying let's share testimonies. You know, it is, but, but it's kind of cute, right? Love yeah. stories, love church. Love I don't know. Church, love <laughs> stories. But honestly, you know, of course, there is the hilarious, like, branding element of things. But, like, more, most importantly, any story that we're sharing about God's influence in our lives or the lives of others really ought be a love story. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and, and so although it is certainly like fun to be like love stories, you know, <laughs> um, what we asked y'all to do was share stories with us of how God either has revealed his love to you mm-hmm. or through you. Mm-hmm. So we're just going to yield the floor and we'll probably ask you some questions on the other side of telling us what you wrote down. Yeah, sweet. Uh, so to start this off, I would say... About X amount of time ago, like over a month now maybe at this point, uh, I, it was revealed to me that um, I reject love. You know, not just struggle at accepting love, but I like openly reject it. And you know, I for a while now have believed in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, like I accepted that. But in terms of on a daily basis of just receiving God's love in every part of the day and even from other people. I mean, even my own husband uh, and my friends, I was just, I had a wall up and I would just kind of be like, hit the cancel button, you know? Uh, And it was revealed to me before, like this wasn't anything new per se, but it was finally, I was finally at a point where I was like, this needs to change, like this can't continue on. And and I just prayed to God, and I was like, I, I don't know what to do. Because the reason I didn't do anything before is because I didn't know what to do, and so I just kept doing what I always did, thinking, oh, it will, I don't really care if it changes, maybe it will, whatever. I was very much 
don't know, apathetic and stuck in my old ways in that. But this time, I just surrendered it to God and was like, Lord, like, you take this because I, I literally don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, I want to say like a few days later, I don't know, but the first session of She happened. Yeah. And I was assigned to Jill's group and just like this release happened there that night. And I think that was one of, one of the first steps of God just like, you know, picking at that wall I put up because, you know, I, I let him in and he's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to, you know, bulldoze it all down and we're, we're going to like, totally. I'm not going to delay. <laughs> uh, and so he did and... I want to say that the next week or something, I just felt like this gut feeling to approach Jill and just tell her about it, about like, hey, uh, like, you're old, you got wisdom, like. <laughs> <laughs> I think they called them gray hairs this yeah, sorry. morning. Uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> and I, I mean old in like the best possible, like the Bible just praises the elderly, like, they are blessed that they have gray hair. Um, and so I do not mean that as a diss or anything. I, I see it as, like, a crown of gold. Um, and so I, yeah, I, it was definitely, like, the grace of God just fell on me to even approach Jill because context, it's not like Jill and I were talking every day. I don't even know if she, like, knew my name personally beyond just me emceeing up here. And so I was like, oh my gosh, like, Lord, she's going to think I'm crazy. <laughs> like, going up to her and being like, hey. But uh, it was amazing because God was already working in Jill leading up to that. Like, he was putting me on her heart about the same stuff that, like, I was seeking the Lord for and, like, Lord, figure out what to do because I don't know what to do. And so Jill was just ready. I mean, literally in the moment that I approached her, like, she was like, yes, like, I will help you. Like, I'm going to walk through this with you by the grace of God. And, um, and she just prayed over me. And from then, everything changed. And so uh, she even gave me, like, some stuff I could do right away. Just simple things is like, uh, when Zach says, I love you to me, instead of thinking in my head, that's not real. I, you know, I clicked the cancel button. She told me to like look at him in the eyes and just say thank you. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> where are you? I don't even know where you are. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's your eyes? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's amazing how that one gesture, just like warmth was brought back to our home. Wow. Because turns out when you're not believing that your own husband actually loves you and it's just a thing that's being said or just, you know, I'm rejecting everyone's love, you grow distant and the home grows cold and your roommates, you know, and you're wondering, like, why isn't stuff changing? And then you get used to it thinking we can just be friends. Like, that's okay. But the thing is, is, like, and what I'm learning uh, with God working through Jill is that, like, God has so much more for me than that. He designed marriage and, like, it's part of my inheritance to yeah. take possession of that, of, like, life and love and passion and all of that in a marriage and not, like, if God just wanted me to be Zach's friend and we hang out, like, there would be no ring on our fingers, you know, and no vows yeah. said. So, right. uh, yeah, and just... And Jill committed, like, by the grace of God. Jill wasn't just like, here, uh, here's this nice thing, run along, you know. Uh, She was like, let's meet up every week. And throughout the week was just, I mean, some of you that may know Jill, like, she's a prayer warrior. And so she was praying for me in her own time, reaching out to me, giving me a word. Maybe God gave her that day or a scripture. And was just like, when she said that, she would walk with me through this love journey, she called it. Like, okay. she, like, no, no joke, she wasn't playing around. And I think that's part of, you know, we're talking all about her pastor appreciation earlier. And I just think about, like, that's something I value, I mean, in you guys. And I think it flows into the church body of just, those words are real. You know, you, you don't say it and then 
don't live up to it or it's just like a nicety that we throw in because Midwest nice. It's like, yeah. no, this is real and yeah. you can rely on it. And so yeah. um, cool. I just saw that. I see it in you guys when I hang out with you and I saw it in Jill and I was just like, wow, that's awesome. Like, that's super cool. It's Yeah, I'm like honestly con- cautious to commit because I don't want to go back on my board ever, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I think something that really stands out to me in that too, and maybe this will save Jill a wine <laughs> after service, um, you know, uh, but it really is. It's cool that God kind of showed you someone specific, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. in it's the really body cool. and, and that it wasn't one of the pastors, you know, mm-hmm. I think that that's super cool. And of course, Jill is in a position of leadership over our mm-hmm. prayer team here, um, but I think that that's really critical, yeah. that, that the Lord showed you a specific person and that he was already preheating <laughs> that person, you know, sure, and yeah. preparing them um, to minister to you in a way that's actually life-changing. Mm-hmm. Totally. The, the oven was preheated and ready to go. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> I think that's something you can pray to. I know that's something when when I feel like God's revealed something to me and it involves another person, often I am just like, God, reveal that to them too so yeah. that, you know, we can just come together on this. She's talking about our marriage. Yeah, she's yeah, mostly. <laughs> that's, that's what she does. She says, Lord, show Stephen. Yep. I know, and I know he will, and I know that he hears him. And, and we, can, we can believe that about other people in the body too. Yeah. 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 I, something I wanted to add to that. Yeah. Uh, is I remember when I was first telling Kara about it, of being like, wow, like, God did this crazy thing, turns out. Like, yeah. you know, what's amazing is, um, I think it's Titus 2. Is that what I specifically referenced yeah, I to think you? So. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it's happening in real life. Like, and for context, what it is, is like, it's urging the older woman to teach the younger woman how to love their husbands and how mm. to love their children. I don't have children yet. I have a cat, but that doesn't count. But like, <laughs> it, it, does, it does not count. <laughs> no. Specifically cats. Don't count. <laughs> Dogs, debatable. Cats, whoa, whoa, sorry. Whoa, whoa. Are we causing sorry, division in the church? <laughs> hey, you know. <laughs> uh, but it was just amazing how, like, that was happening. Like, you know, we talk about how the, the word of God is living and it's alive and it's yeah. active. Yeah. And, like, I think oftentimes, I mean, myself included, I'm just like, yeah, the early church is the early church. That thriving, everything that's going on there, like that, that's kumbaya, but that ain't happening here in 2024. You know, mm-hmm. like we've sometimes fall into the lie of we've aged out of it, yeah. you know. But I feel like that's something God is breaking down with my time here and especially with my time with Jill of just like, no, it's here. The spirit's moving. He's working and like, I thought it was so beautiful with the elders coming up this morning. Cause I was yeah. just How like, cool. Wow. Yeah. Like that's literally what I'm going through and I'm witnessing and like, yeah. and let me tell you guys, I mean, you can probably already tell, but like literally life changing yeah. with Jill pouring into me and like, like testimony after testimony every week we're meeting up and I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Turns out love changes everything. (laughs) (laughs) Amen. (laughs) Come on. Love changes everything. That's a good word. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I know these are stories of victory, but how many all know every story is kind of like a work in progress too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and so I think it'd be good for us to pray over Zach and Grace, his marriage, you know? Yeah. Um, so Zach, come on up, brother, you know? <laughs> Might as well just lay hands on you guys and, and pray over you that God continues just to work mightily in your life. So everybody that's out there, let's all just extend a hand towards them. Father, we thank you for the Wilsmans, and we thank you for just, <laughs> it's just like such a divine thing that you brought them here. We thank you for the the power couple that they are. And and we thank you, Lord, for continuing just to reveal your love to both of them. And and Lord, we, we honor you and thank you for what you've been doing in Grace's heart and the things that you've shared or that she's shared here this morning. Mm -hmm. And, And we love and honor Jill too. But Lord, we give you all of the glory. You get all of the glory for everything going on in this couple's life. 
We thank you for continuing to bless them, lead them, guide them. Uh, through. I thank you for making things clear and easy that would otherwise be difficult and clouded. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said, amen. 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 Come on, let's celebrate the both of them. Thank you for sharing, Grace. It's incredible. You're the best. Okay, bye. You're dismissed. You're dismissed. Thank you. <laughs> it's funny she said Wisconsin nice. We end every God company, which is like our young adult squad that meets at Kara and Mai's place. Every night at the end of it, we're just like, okay, bye. Okay, bye. Yeah, we're, we're, we kind of don't fall into that Wisconsin. I mean, we're nice. Don't get me wrong, but we're not passive aggressive You're at all. You're real nice. Okay. Yeah, I'm you're nice. nice too. Thank you so much. <laughs> you're really nice. But at the end of it, we'll say, okay, bye. But honestly, then we end up hanging out long and hugging yeah. and, you know, so we pretend that we can get through it, but yeah. we're still Wisconsin nice, you know? <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, y'all, you ready for another story? I am. Come on, true story. We're calling up at this moment, Jason Anderson. Come on, Jason. Woo! Let's show him some love as he comes up here. Get this on for you. There you go. So, Jason, right. how, long, how long have you been a part of Love Church now? Uh, maybe a little over two years. Okay, awesome. I, I know um, the way I've described you to people, whenever they... You've described me to people? Oh, I've described you to people. <laughs> Sorry, people. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I think you're going to like this. Because if somebody, if I'm talking, I'm like, wow, yeah, did, did you, have, you, have you met Jason? Like, have you, you know, I'll just, the way I'll describe you is real muscular and so smiley. And yeah, like, strong, dude, where it gets at I would dude. say strong, but gentle. Yeah. Yeah. Like your yeah. smile melts me, man. And so I know, I know you're going to share your story, but I, I just mean it. It's, it's funny how just being yourself can minister to people yeah. and, and your presence here. I know that you've stepped into um, formal serving, but, but also like before that was ever a part of anything, you know, I just, I would, when I would come and I'd see your smile, genuinely it would minister to my heart. So, oh, sweet. Thanks. <laughs> and yeah. now you get to talk. Share your story with yeah. us. Well, um, it, it's called Love Stories, and uh, they wanted something of, one of the things they'd asked for was a, uh, maybe stories of like answered prayer, how God's moving in your life. And I've been married for 25 years. Um, she doesn't come to church. But um, in 25 years, we didn't, we didn't start like, like normal people. It's um, single guy, single girl. You meet together. You go on little dates. We never had dates. I would come to her house where she stayed with her two kids that she already had. And um, that was our dates. We'd hang out at her house, watch TV, wait till the kids fall asleep and put them to bed and then hang out for a little while. And then I'd take off and go tell my roommate about her. Um, so we didn't, we, we've never been like the traditional couple. We've always, always worked opposite shifts. So we would, we've gotten used to not ever seeing each other. And it had been mentioned, looking back now, this is kind of maybe sowing some seeds, that maybe we're, we always get told we're like the cute couple. And it's, uh, we would kind of agree that, oh, maybe because we never see each other, we can't screw anything up. And, and it's, it's worked out that way, that we were, we've always been apart. And uh, I started, I was listening to this, this amazing podcast, Hearts for the Kingdom. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of it. <laughs> there, uh, but there were a couple of episodes that, that kind of hit me. I'm like, you know, I feel this way. I feel this way. I didn't know I was lacking here. I just thought maybe it was just some weird thing I'm going through. Yeah. Um, and uh, that in turn caused me to start looking to, gosh, I'm, I am kind of lacking here. I, if you would have asked me at any point in my marriage, I have a good marriage. If you'd asked my wife and she said it, we have a good marriage. So it's not that I'm saying that I came from a bad place. But I'm like, what? I, I need more of that. I need more of that, and I need more of that. And so I, I decided one day I'm going to take it to God. 
And so I prayed. But I didn't pray for her to meet that need or to meet that need or to meet that need. I'm like, if I'm lacking, she's lacking. So I, I prayed that God would make me a better husband. And it was maybe a day or two later, we had a garage sale. And we're sitting there in the garage sale, and she took, nobody's coming. We live in the middle of nowhere. I think we had five people show up our, our first day. And uh, she goes off, and she sees something that I've been kind of hidden spot where I've been stacking stuff I haven't gotten to yet. And she came back and just exploded on me. And normally, when something like that would happen, the wall goes up. I shut the ears off. And I just sit here, I'm like, don't put me in a bad mood. You know, you get defensive. Um, and it started to do that, and like, no, I'm going to listen. And so I listened, I listened. And then as she was sitting there going off, and this and this, all I want you to do is this, this, this. I'm like, this answered my prayer. This is like verbatim what I was asking for. So it sounds really bad. Your wife is just chewing you a new one. But this was the answer to my prayer. Yeah, wow. And so I could, it was something I could take and make a, a physical change to. So I'm like, you know, I got time in the morning. I'll, I'll put on a, I have a prophet I listen to every day. I have, this is my God time in the morning. But like, God wants me to have a good relationship with my wife as well. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm going to give part of that away because I, I have the time in the morning, my drive to work, my drive home from work, you know, just random thoughts during the day. And then after I work second shift and she was already sleeping when I get home, I have that time after that that I pretty much give to God anyway. I'm like, mm. I can take a little in the morning. I'm going to go do this stuff she wants me to do. Yeah. And so that, and she noticed a change there. And that changed my focus, not on what do I feel I'm lacking, but into me as a servant. Yeah. And uh, so that kind of, I think I talked to, uh, to Brian and mentioned like, man, I feel like, like I just got married. Wow. I'm looking at her as if we just got married, wow. like just these little, little changes. And then we went on vacation in the place that really puts a, a, a look on people's face in church. You went where? So we were in Vegas. I was going to say Vegas. Got to Vegas. It was Vegas. And surprisingly, there are billboards now. I know that God is going to do a huge, huge move in Vegas. I've heard this from a number of people. But they have billboards up about Saint City. And uh, so even in a place that has some principalities and powers that are very powerful, putting mean, evil things over that area, God can do amazing things because I went on vacation being the one feeling like, man, I, it's like I just got married. And we left, yeah. both of us feeling like we just got married. Wow. So it really sparked something. And on top of that, my work schedule changed. So now I get to see her in the morning and I get to see her at, after work wow. every day of the week. Wow. wow, that's so, huge. So not only did I get like a renewal and a restoration, but we even got the time back. That's wow. So it's just unreal. So all glory be to God. That's so cool. And Hearts of the Kingdom podcast, just, some, just saying. Shout it out, man. Hey, in our announcement slides, we have the Hearts for the Kingdom thing. So just like after service or whatever, watch the screens. There's a QR code or, or, just, or just Google just search, search it. Hearts yeah. for the Kingdom. Hey, there you go, a little bumper. Um, the, the reason why we specifically, um, when I was looking through the stories, Jason, what really stood out to me, and you communicated it super well, like y'all are crushing this. Yeah. Um, but, but the thing that specifically stood out to me is so often in relational issues, people are going, well, they don't, and they should, and they got it, and it's like, yo, God wants to work through you yeah. mm -hmm. to serve them. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and so I just, uh, again, all the glory goes to God, but I also just really appreciate that, that you responded in a way that's like, okay, Lord, I want to step up. I want to step in. and Taking responsibility. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And especially really after cool. she yelled at you about a stack of stuff, bro. Like, I got the stacks. You know what yeah. I mean? I, Kara, Kara gets at me about piles every now and then. And are there any other men in the house that has, like, a pile of stuff? Yeah, 
What's with the piles? Yeah, I don't know what it is, dude. It's just like, like something we do. Honestly, we have. I'm yeah. a really clean he's guy. He's actually but I got, pretty clean, pretty good to get put together. But there's always piles. You'll find like a guitar pick, <laughs> two socks, and oh, there's a always. Cup. That's the other thing. There's always socks everywhere throughout the house. I'm always like socks, socks, and True's now it's doing it too. Not just you. Okay, yeah. thank you, brother. Yeah. All right. Socks on the couch. <laughs> everywhere. The bed. Never know where. There they and are. they just oh. gradually come off too. Carol will point at me sometimes in the middle of a sock, like, journey. Yeah. Because, like, it'll be like, it'll be like 6 p.m. and the sock is halfway it's off like my half foot. off his foot. I'm like, you know? there it goes. It's going to be on the floor pretty soon. <laughs> but, but I do, I really, I respect that in a moment that could have just, like, like, there's, like, flesh bait there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there's, like, dude, that, you had, you had a choice to make. You could have yielded to the spirit. Or you could have yielded to the flesh. And, and I'm so grateful that in following the spirit, you didn't carry out the desires of the flesh. And even further than that, you see the fruit of the spirit yeah. manifested in your life. Like, that's so beautiful. And, and part of it, you've, you've had a couple sermons on more intimate topics in marriage. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one of the things that, that stuck with me and helped me kind of lean towards the spirit side. Yeah was you were talking about, my job is to please you, and if you come into this with your job is to please me, think how amazing this is. And I wasn't thinking of it in the context you were yeah. preaching about, but I'm like, just in general, mm -hmm. how awesome that is. If I'm here to serve you, you're here to serve me. A lot of people get hung up on like marriage vows, like how come the woman has to add the word obey? You know, and that the man is the leader of the house. And like, the man's the leader of the house. Like, Jesus was the leader. And Jesus came down and washed their feet. Come on, bro. Sure. You know, you're a servant leader. Yep. And um, so that that really was something. I don't know. That's awesome. Man. So cool. That's good. Well, hey, again, I feel like we should wrap these all up with prayer. Come on. Yeah, if you could, we could celebrate God and what he's doing here. But let's, let's pray over Jason, but then also I just feel like this is an awesome opportunity for all of our marriages, you know, for us to just kind of glean from that same thing and just to invite God to do the same thing in our lives. Does that sound good? Awesome. Yeah. Cool. So, Jason. Get around. Yeah. All right. Everybody put your hand toward Jason. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in Jason's marriage. What's your wife's name, Jason? Stacy. Stacy. Jason and Stacy. And, and we thank you, Lord, for how you are bringing them together and that your freshness, the, the freshness of your presence is undeniable. Lord, I thank you that this does not wane. I thank you that it only increases. I thank you that this story is a beginning, that it is not a, a climactic thing, that this is, this is an upward trajectory in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for keeping Jason. We know that you keep us. You keep us from evil. You keep us from temptation. But you keep us in your way. And he's clearly communicated here that he's showing up to serve, leading through serving. And we thank you, Lord, for helping him continue to serve his wife in the creative ways that you bring to mind. We thank you, Lord, for protecting him in his mind from offense and, and however it presents itself. What you got, babe? Well, I just thank you for just overwhelming their house with your love yes. and how that will just pour out to both of them and their relationship and their relationships with others too. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. And then Jason, will you just pray for everybody out here in our marriages? You, hey, you can put a hand on me and Kara. We'll take it. <laughs> Come on, babe. Jason, if you want to pray for us and everybody else here, we'll take it. Coming over. Yeah. I've never had to pray on the spot before. Well, here we go. <laughs> pressure. No pressure. No, no. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you and praise you and bless you the way that you have blessed all of us. I thank you, Lord, that you see the needs that we have and that you are the one that meets them mm -hmm. and that we can all strive to work through you to meet those needs for, for, for every, not just in our marriages, but for everybody. And I thank you for strengthening the marriages we have, strengthening the connections that we have, yes. bringing us closer together yes. uh, in spirit and in body. Um, touch us in our hearts that we can touch each other and let your light shine through us. Mm -hmm. 
And again, I'm on the spot. Jesus knows that. So yes. um, I thank you, Father. And, and in all things, we are grateful and thankful for you and for, yes. for how you touch us yes. and that we can, can show this through others. And, and uh, I bless you for blessing me and for blessing all of these people. Yes. And we bless you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. I think we ought to have this man pray more yeah. often. That's what I think. Hey. <laughs> awesome, Jason. Well, thank you, brother. You can make your way to a seat, and we're grateful for you sharing. Sure. Who's up next, babe? Next up, we've got Kimberly Johnson. Come on. <laughs> Welcome Get to up the here, stage. Mom. <laughs> So, Kimberly, you had a baby shower just yesterday. I did. Congratulations. Yes. Thank I mean, for you. If, if anybody Thank hasn't you. congratulated, let's congratulate her right now. <laughs> Newlywed. I love it. A mm -hmm. Johnson now. So much happening. Oh, yeah. Kimberly life changes. Johnson. <laughs> so awesome. you know? so, Although, I, I don't know, a little part of me is always going to see you as Kimberly Fly because it's just so okay. fly. It's <laughs> It's a pretty dope last name. Yeah, it's pretty, so pretty fly. fly. It's pretty yeah. fly. So, I mean, obviously, with all that's going on in your life, we mm -hmm. could talk to you probably for three hours about all of the things, right? <laughs> that's why I didn't testify about my life, because I, like, can't stop talking about, like, Aww. all that God is doing. It's yeah. crazy. It's yeah. so cool. So, So, yeah. we will yield the floor specifically for that, which you shared. Thank you. So, okay. go ahead. So, yeah, I work at a factory, so it's kind of like a rough environment. I don't know how to explain it, but basically, I've been there for like two years now, a little bit over, and I've really tried to implement, like, in my life, generally speaking, but specifically at work, like, just trying to use that as, like, a realm of influence and to like minister to the people that I work with. Um, Cause I think for the most part, none of them know Jesus. Um, well, <laughs> when I started, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but anyways, so there has been some people that were highlighted to me. There's been like, honestly, so many cool things that God has done through there's, uh, yeah, it's crazy. I just could, like not stop talking about how God is so good. But the main really amazing thing, I've been kind of discouraged because it's not, I've been trying to get people to come to love, to like come to love church and like yeah. nobody's calm. <laughs> <laughs> so I was starting to feel kind of discouraged because I probably won't be my like career there is probably wrapping up with the baby. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, man, like, <laughs> what is this time like really done and served? And so anyways, but one of my friends, someone that I work with, came to me a couple of months ago, I think, saying, and she is pretty adamantly we talk about Jesus a lot, but she doesn't agree with me. <laughs> so she has she has her own kind of like view of things, but she's at least open to talking about it. But she came to me a couple of months ago, and she said her nine-year-old son came to her and just like out of nowhere <laughs> believes in God. <laughs> and it's just like <sighs> the most beautiful thing. <laughs> I have met him once, so I have met him before, but like, it was just so cool <laughs> and like, yeah. such a beautiful way that it's obviously the story's not over, you know? For sure. <laughs> so this is definitely one of those things, it's like, it's a testimony, but like, very much just like first initial breakthrough, I'm like, whoa, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that was like, God knew I needed a little encouragement of like, hey, like, there are seats, and like, I'm working, don't worry. <laughs> He's got it. He's yeah. not done, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, but um, yeah, so we've talked a lot about, she, like, I will probably get together with them at some point, and we'll talk with him about God and stuff, because she doesn't know any other Christians that she really trusts to talk with him about that stuff, and she can't answer his questions. Um, so... 
So she's like encouraging him in his faith, which is beautiful. I think that's like a huge step, uh, honestly, for somebody who doesn't know Jesus. Like that's really amazing to not shut him down. Um, And he, so he hasn't come to love kids. We've talked about that. (laughs) That's, that's, we're talking. (laughs) So we're figuring that out. But I recently got him, she said that I could get him a Bible. Yeah. So uh, so he now has a, a picture, like an action Bible Fun. of his own. Yes, cool. and it has a low church sticker in it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Are y'all picking this up so right cool. now? <laughs> like, how nuts is this that we get to give a, so good. a, a child <laughs> of an atheist or whatever they happen to believe? Sure, yeah. I'm not really, A yeah. Bible! <laughs> yeah. Like, that's so cool. crazy, and it's so, so exciting. Cool. And, and also, like you said, the story's not over. I know mm-hmm. that I have seen it time and time and time and time yeah. again that when a child gives their life to the Lord, yeah. it, what's super cool about this is I have not seen it personally in my life at this young of an age yet, yeah. where, like, a child that's this awesome. young gives their life to the Lord, so, and then, yeah. like, yeah. that starts it up in their parents. But I've seen it even in our church where somebody comes, they give their life to the Lord, and then the parents show up, and it's like, yeah, dude. So <laughs> sure. it's just yeah. like, that so is, cool. I mean, good night. I, I believe that your, your intentionality, your purposeful approach to this person and just being mm-hmm. real and honest and open yeah. is, is truly like a, a spirit-led inlet Mm-hmm. And, and I know that's something that we harp on here quite a bit is that we want to see God move in your realms of influences, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and so it's so cool to me that you've been approaching factory work because some people could just pout about the fact <laughs> that they, they're with a bunch of sinners. And I know sometimes... Which I do sometimes. Yeah, like, I, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. <laughs> I appreciate you being honest about that, you know? But like, and that can be a hard position, mm-hmm. but like... Sometimes God puts us in these hard situations and these hard positions because the people there need him. Yeah. And, and so yeah. I just, I, I just from, from your story, I'm encouraged. I remember factory work and being just like, yo, let's light this joint up. So yeah. whatever your realm of influence looks like, I want you to be mm-hmm. encouraged here yeah. and, and know that it might not look like what you think. It's like, she's like, yeah, no, I'm going to. I'm going to bless this lady. And then her son. (laughs) Out of nowhere. Yeah, that's so cool. So cool. Yeah. And her son obviously lives with your friend too. So like God is in their house. You know, you know, that's big. Yeah. There's a Bible in their house. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Come on. Yeah. That's so good. Awesome. Anything else that you feel like you want to share around it? I think the main thing that I just feel like God has really spoken to me through this whole experience, and I was reminded this morning of River praying over you guys, was yeah. just so, so beautiful, <laughs> so sweet, yeah. um, is just the, I think in Matthew, Jesus says, let the children come to me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's just like, like a reminder to be childlike. Yeah. But then I just think like, I don't know how important our children are and like mm-hmm. having a child that's like been repeated in so many ways and I don't know. That's yeah. just on my heart. I guess I don't really that's know so what my good. point that's is so with cool. that. But <laughs> no, that's <laughs> yeah, good. I don't know. That's <laughs> good. Remember the yeah. children. Yes. <laughs> True. I feel like that's the theme today. Like remember the more the gray hairs and then the children. Yeah. You know? Come on. Yeah. Yes. You know, that's good. <laughs> Everyone is important. <laughs> well, Kinda cool. Kimberly, will you do us a solid and just pray for yeah. the church fam? Maybe pray for sure. the kids in our church. And, yeah. and then I'm asking you to pray for a lot of specific things. Maybe pray <laughs> for the kids in our church. Um, and then just pray for people as they minister in their realms of influence. Sure. You know? Yeah. Awesome. Go ahead. Absolutely. Lord Jesus, I just thank you so much for Love Church and for our pastors for our pastor's children, I'm thinking, I'm realizing now, Kara is our pastor's children. <laughs> yeah. um, so included, it's so cool. You're just so amazing, God, how you work. But I just pray, Lord, that you work through the body that you've built here and work through the children that are here 
and moving in your spirit, Lord. They are bright and passionate and they know you, I think, sometimes better than we can know you because they're so innocent. And I just pray that you continue to protect them and keep your hand over them, over their minds and their hearts and their bodies and just continue moving through them and teaching us <laughs> through them. It's amazing, Lord, how you work. And I just pray for everybody here, including our gray hairs, in their wisdom, that you continue to work through their realms of influence as that varies so, so vastly. <laughs> and just cover this city with your love yes, and your truth and your light. Yes. And we thank you for it because we see it every day. <laughs> you always are working, Jesus. Thank you. We love you. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Hey, amen. I don't mean to put this person on blast, but apparently they don't watch anyways. So what's, what's your friend's name? Um, or not. You can well, say no. You can say no. We can just pray for them generally if that's better. Maybe. Yeah. Because okay. yeah, yeah. maybe she'll watch one day and hey. I just don't want to make her feel super. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe she'll come yeah. and be like, oh, that's who you are. They show you up know? and everybody's like, yeah. you there. Like, I heard about yeah. you. It's a lot. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. well, well, Lord, we do thank you for Kimberly's friend, mm -hmm. too, from work. And um, we just thank mm -hmm. you that you continue to knock on her door. And, and I thank you that it's so cool that that knock might come from already within their home. Yeah. And so, Lord, we bless um, this child. Yeah. And we thank you that it sounds like um, this child is believing in you. We thank you specifically for a gospel opportunity, um, for the gospel to be preached to this child and to the parent and um, for your kingdom to come in yeah. their life yeah. on earth as it is in heaven, yeah. in Jesus' name. And I thank you, too, that who you truly are, God, yeah. is revealed to them. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Amen. 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 All right, well, thank you for sharing, Kimberly. Thank Come you on. Guys. Can we celebrate what God's doing? <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Y'all ready for one more? Yes. All right, I'm going to call up Joe Eliason at this point. Let's show him some love as he makes his way Andrew. to the stage. <laughs> Come on, Joe. <laughs> number one fan in the front row. <laughs> Yo, it's super I cool that. that your daughter is your number one it's fan. It's the cutest thing. <laughs> like, when you're around and when you're not around. Like, yeah. when Ashley yeah. was coming to God Company, I can't tell you, man. I'd be like, yo, I want to get to know you, not just your dad, you know? Because she's like, my dad is this, my dad is this, it's my dad is love. this. And I'm just like, dude, you really love your dad. So, like... Way to be. <laughs> Listen, it's all free game. <laughs> but it does, it does testify of your character too, man. Yeah, you know? Sure. And, and so, um, like we were talking about this morning, godly fathers. Mm -hmm. Godly fathers. Godly fathers. Families, um, they, they need fathers. And that can take different shapes and um, different forms, even when we don't have natural fathers. But I'm just so grateful that you're a solid dad and Ashley's hitting you with the, <laughs> look at this, come on, you know. So bless you for being a good dad, man. Thank you. Yeah. All right, tell us your story. Come on, let's go. Okay. I'm a chaplain part-time, and it's so cool. I got a text from a young, young gentleman, and... He was struggling, and he wanted to meet and talk. So I believe it was the same day he texted me that I met with him to talk with him. And when he walked in to the place, I could tell he was upset, he was shaken, and I could sense there was something going on. So he sat down, and I just told him, asked him a few questions. He started telling me a little bit about what was happening. So I, while I was listening, I was also praying how, 
what can I say, what can I do to help him? Because he's the same age as my son, and my son was struggling with a lot of the same stuff. So I'm praying, and I kept getting, ask him if he knows who God is. So I so, said, okay. So when he was done, I asked him, do you know who God is? He said, I do believe there is a God, but I'm not sure. So then let him talk some more, and I'm getting this staring deep down to tell him about Jesus, what Jesus did for us. So it's like, okay, I said, well, after he told me his issues, he's just trembling. Um, I looked at him and I said, you know, I can help you with that. I know a guy that can help you. That he died on that cross for your sins, my sins. That he conquered everything you're going through. I said, if you're willing to accept him as your savior, I can help you with that. Then part of it, waiting for him to tell me yes or no, you know, I got the enemy saying, oh, maybe this ain't the right time. So I was about to tell him, well, maybe we'll wait, but no. And I said, no. I said, if you're ready, we can do this. So he said, I am. So we said the prayer. He gave his life to Jesus. And while I was still talking to him, I could tell he stopped shaking. He actually had a smile on his face. And he was thanking me. I said, it's not me that died on the cross. It's Jesus. Because of him, you can walk out here new, knowing where you're going to go when it's your time. And so I waited a few days, and I sent him some texts, see how he was doing. He took off from work for a few days, and he came back. The last text I got was a few days ago was, he said, since he accepted Jesus, his life has been so wonderful. Everything is different. Everything has changed. And the funny thing is, after he accepted Jesus, he said, I'm the third person that talked to him about it. Wow. it. Included his dad and his brother. And I said, well, I said, now that you accept him, now you can tell them you're a child of God. Yeah. So I still try to keep in touch with him once a week, and he's doing great. And believe me, the high I felt was <laughs> like nothing I ever felt before afterwards. I, I thought I was floating. Wow. But I'm so thankful that being a young guy, he gave his life. And I do believe that there's a lot of young guys out there that are struggling and they don't know where to turn. So I just pray to God to send more that I can tell them about Jesus. Yo. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, that is incredible, man. I mean, on, honestly, um, enough said. You know, like, I, I don't know how much we need to elaborate other than there's, there's one thing that comes to mind in what you were saying. And it's that you can kind of like, you can have the opportunity presented right to you. And you still had to, like, you were there it's all set up. You preach the gospel, and then you're like, maybe we'll wait. You know what I mean? Just, just that thought. And I'm so grateful that you stepped out. Because it's like that, that step, that final step, at least in my life, is usually the hardest one to take. You know what I mean? It's even like you preach the gospel, you put it all out there, and then, and then we can kind of go into like passive-aggressive mode. So if you like that, then uh, yeah. think about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Instead of saying like, and, and what, what irritates me is some people view this as manipulation. It's like a, if someone is in a hard spot and you preach the gospel and then right there in the middle of that hard spot, aren't you just taking advantage? Yeah. Darn tootin'. Because yeah. Jesus said, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I'll give you rest. So you better believe that we're going to talk to people when they're weary and heavy laden and he is going to give them rest. Yeah. But the fact that you stepped out in that moment, it's funny because I think a lot of the times we talk to people and we encourage them to share the gospel, but that invitation to receive it right there, it's funny that that's like an additional step, but I'm grateful that you communicated that because yeah. it does take like... It takes a boldness. And yeah. Yeah. It takes you stepping outside of yourself, you know, and that's really cool. Yeah. So again... First of all, thank you, Lord, for bringing this person into the kingdom. And, and we thank you for continued exponential fruit. We thank you that you continue to uh, work mightily through Joe and in his chaplaincy and in, in that general chaplaincy in general. Anybody else who works alongside Joe, um, wherever Joe is going, Lord, we thank you that your presence is strong and and Joe, I would appreciate it if um, you could just pray for people that, for confidence and courage to step out in boldness. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for that day. And Lord, I just pray for everyone here to give them the boldness. So look at me. I, I'm not the type to go up to someone and say that. I just pray that everyone can hear your voice when it's time. Open the doors, Lord. I just thank you for everything you're doing. Everything you're doing in the youth and about to do, just like today with us gray hair guys, gals, <laughs> that you're using us for the youth, that the youth can come to us and not be afraid. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, can we just give God some more glory? Come on. Joe, thank you for sharing. Um, speaking of stepping out in boldness, I don't know if there's anybody here who has not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, um, but maybe there's even someone watching online right now, and you pretty much laid it out. You know what yeah. I mean? But quick recap, what would you say about the gospel? If you were going to talk, if you were going to talk to somebody online right now, that was in a familiar situation to the person that you ministered to. Could you just real quick preach the gospel to him and give him that same invitation? Yes. Um, Jesus took all our sins on that cross. He bled for us. He was beaten for us. He, God loves us that much. He gave his only begotten son to die for us. All we got to do is believe in him, believe God sent him, believe he died for us, and we're saved. That's easy. It's not hard. You just got to believe, and he does all the rest. So just pray that anyone that wants to accept him, step forward. It's, it's amazing. Your life will change. I've seen it. I've been there. So thank you. That's so good. And, and if you're online and you're watching this right now and you're like, yo, I want what he's talking about, then just receive what he's talking about. And, and I would encourage you, come to church. Come to church. You, you aren't just receiving Jesus as your Lord, but you're receiving the church as your family. And, and there's, a, there's a family of people here on the earth that want to stand with you and have your back and do life with you and pray for you and offend you sometimes and challenge you. And I mean, I'm not just going to set them up with a bunch of phony stuff. I mean, like there's, there's a lot of good, but you're going to get challenged too, like real talk. And, and so I, I would encourage you though, all of that is good and for your growth. And, and so come be with us and God's doing mighty things in the church. Amen? Awesome. Well, thank you again, Joe. Come on. Can we just show God and Joe some love? <laughs>